The all new Garmin 4Runner 970 and the 570 are here, as well as the new heart rate strap, the HRM 600. There's a whole bunch of new features for running and triathlons, which I am personally very excited about. So we're gonna dive into what these new watches do, what's nice about them, testing them out, comparing them actually to the old 965 watch and the Phoenix 8. And then what new features do you get with this HRM 600? and all the new running stats you get with these watches actually only the 970 right now but updates coming to some of the other watches but not all of them we'll get into that we'll compare some of the data and just look at the hardware differences to see which watch is actually best for running marathons because i personally want to run a sub three hour marathon at some point in the next few years hopefully this year so i need to have the best tools to do so let's get into it now i typically like to wear the garmin phoenix 8 on my left wrist right now one of the biggest reasons is because of this flashlight and I'm very excited to announce that the new 4Runner 970 also has a flashlight. I think it seems to be potentially brighter. This is the Phoenix 8, 4Runner 970, peak brightness. They both show the flashlight icon on the top, and this is both of them at red. But I personally love this feature because in the dark when I wake up in the night, I'll use this to look around. Yes, the Apple Watch has a flashlight via the screen, but it's harder to start, and it's just it's harder to like, you know, you gotta flip your wrist, whereas this, you're wearing it on your wrist, and it just shines straight in front of you. Great for running at night. So I'm very excited they added this to the 4Runner 970. It is not on the 4Runner 570, sadly, but at least there are more watches with this light. Next, the screens are much brighter. The 970, I think, has quite a bit brighter screen than the Phoenix 8. It gets relatively close to the Apple Watch Ultra 2. They don't have the exact nits, but some are saying it's 1,500 to 2,000 nits. I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 can go up to 3,000 nits. So these are already, the Phoenix 8, I would say, you can still see in daylight, but now it's going to be even easier to see these other watches as well here we can go to the 970 screen brightness settings hit low maybe we go all the way to high and you can see how bright it gets in comparison to the apple watch ultra 2 it is pretty bright it might be even brighter than the apple watch ultra 2. the phoenix 8 got a speaker and microphone and now we have that in the 970 and a 570 as well you can take phone calls especially if you're using an android phone it's a bit more complicated with iPhones, but there's also voice assistance to be able to start workouts and things like that. The new watches will also take your skin temperature overnight so that way you can see how that relates to how you slept, uh, potential illnesses, and some female cycle tracking features. And the new watches also have an update called evening report. So if you have some of the other watches where you get a morning report, the new ones will have a new evening report as well. And then two race features that you'll get, uh, there is a, there's an auto lap by timing gate. So if it's a popular race, they will already have this information. Let's say like I did the London Marathon and I'm getting mile updates, but they're a little bit shorter than the actual race because I'm running a bit more. Now they'll have the mile markers inputted. Garmin has done this work for us. And as you're going through on the race, it'll beep and buzz and give you actual mile splits. I will want to test this for an actual race, maybe a fall marathon like New York or Berlin, but I should be able to see my actual paces for the race bib at chip time rather than what the GPS is tracking. And lastly, the finish time estimate. So if you finish the race and you forget to stop your watch, it'll say, hey, you actually stopped running. Do you want to go back and save that previous time? Because that might have been the finish line. And you can easily do that with a confirmation on the watch. Now when it comes to the 570, let's go over that real quick. This is the smaller version, which is the 42 millimeter. There's also a 47 millimeter, which gets up to 11 days of battery life. This has slightly lower days of battery life but very similar. These bands are gorgeous. I love the new titanium bezels. The amount of compliments I've gotten just in the past five days of wearing this is insane. People love this watch. They're like, it looks gorgeous. You look great. Oh, what watch is that? I want it. So I'm surprised. People love this watch. I think the new colors, the bands, they just pop and they look clean. The 970 is cool, but it just doesn't pop as much. It doesn't have that aesthetic that people seem to like. Uh, so if you really want to watch, I know a lot of people want like a cutesy or cool looking watch. This, this one stands out a lot. Both of them have multi-band. A GPS so they should be accurate which will dive into that information a little bit later but there are a variety of colors that you can get with both of these options this is the bright green color so it pops on the back a little bit more you just can't see it as much on the front and then when it comes to the hardware of the 970 how does it differ to the 965 so luckily I have the 965 right here very similar versions these are the same millimeter options the home screens that when you first purchase them are going to be slightly different the bands are pretty close, but slightly different. On the back sides, they do have the kind of the same itching, but there are new heart rate monitors. These are new and improved heart rate monitors, which should be better and more accurate, especially in cold and high movement environments. Same charger, which I do appreciate, but they look almost exactly the same. You're going to have the same buttons. The new 4Runner will also have a color on this side. The buttons will all be circular, whereas the 
965 actually had this more squarish button and on this side the buttons will all stay the same but the 970 will now have icons on it whereas the old 965 did not have any icons you can kind of see that there's different icons on this side but the thickness the dimensions the size are relatively the same and it looks like on the top of the watch the writing is actually instead of on the bezels on the 965 on the 970 it's inside of the bezel as you can see here this is the 965 it has the old heart rate monitor whereas the phoenix 8 and the new 570 and 970 have the newer heart rate monitors, so they are should be more improved and better accuracy. And lastly, the HRM 600. What does this do? This paired with the Forerunner 970 provides some new data points that we have never seen before, and it's only these two at this moment with a few more watches to come soon. And one thing to note is the new HRM 600 feels much more like a polar chest strap because you can actually remove this piece. This is rechargeable. It uses the same Garmin charging plug over here, and then it's got two holes right here where you can insert it, it's got a button right here to turn it on and off and a LED blinking light. So when you press it, the LED goes off to show you if it's pairing or not. You can put it in pairing mode. And one massive difference from the HRM Pro Plus is that it is machine washable. You can take that piece off and machine wash this. Uh, every seven times it says you want to wash this device. Whereas the HRM Pro Plus, you want to rinse and then use soap in the sink every seven, seven times. I and mean, this one does not have a removable top. There, You do remove it and there's a battery inside but it's a bit more difficult and challenging. But in terms of the straps, similar feeling. The bumps are a bit bigger on the new one. I mean, you're gonna get a lot more metrics within this new heart rate strap. It is more expensive, I and mean, that's kind of what comes with it. The heart rate zones on it are slightly similar, maybe bigger actually, it's a bit bigger on this one. It might just be a different size, but it's probably able to just capture more data. And that's where we come in. What kind of data can you now get with this HRM 600? So not only does it give you more data with the, the 970, but you can actually use this as an activity tracker by itself. You can use the Garmin Connect app, track your heart rate. You can even get your daily steps, calories burn, wear this all day if you absolutely wanted to. I saw something on Reddit that there's rumors that Garmin is going to have a Whoop competitor. So that'll be very interesting. I've, I've heard some other brands are also trying to do no display, kind of all day wearing heart rate monitors. And I think this might just be the first step in that direction, who knows? But this can do all day tracking. And then if you connect it to your Forerunner 970, you're going to be able to get new running metrics. So if I scroll down inside of my app, you can see HRM 600, Forerunner 970. And then if I go into charts and scroll down, we get all that typical advanced running metrics data, but there are going to be a few new variables. The first one is impact load factor. It says my actual distance is six miles, my impact load factor was 6.26 miles. This kind of shows you how strenuous this is to compare to your baseline mileage. I think one of their goals is to help prevent injury. And this is just another data metric to look at to say, hey, am I overdoing it, underdoing it? Can I train more or am I pushing it too far? The second one is step speed loss. Looks like I'm getting 11.7 .7 centimeters per second, which is average. And this is to understand your running economy and how efficient your running is. It's how much you slow down when your foot hits the ground. So if you're slowing down a lot when your foot hits the ground, that means your running efficiency is going to be worse. But if you're able to not lose too much energy every time your foot hits the ground, your running efficiency will be better. It gives you the percentile ranges as well in terms of where you want to be. Obviously, less than 8.2 centimeters per second is the 95 percentile. Step speed loss percent as well. And then because I was wearing the heart rate strap, I can get respiration rate. Here, I'm also getting respiration rate and all my other data too. I think as I tend to run more, using step speed loss and impact load will be very interesting to see, hey, is this a data point that I need to use on a consistent basis or is it something that I look at every once in a while? I know like grand contact time, I worked with a PT to help change that variable so that way I can minimize potential injury. So I think the thing I'm most excited about is the impact load because I have this philosophy, don't get injured, don't get sick, and then train hard. And any tool that can help minimize those things is very valuable. Now, lastly, let's compare the actual data. So heart rate monitor data compared to my Apple Watch, GPS data to see how well they performed in New York City. And let's just see how they stack up. And is the data good enough and on par to all their previous watches, which were all relatively good. So we're gonna go to my FitFile viewer that we're working on. Subscribe to my newsletter down below if you wanna get, see the launch of this so that way you can compare your own watch data in the future and maybe we can use that in videos as well. Analyzing my Garmin data, I wore the 965, the 970, the 570 and my Apple Watch Ultra 2. Now we're going to disregard the heart rate data for the 965 and the 570 because I wore those two on my wrist. We're just gonna look at the GPS data, but I will compare the 970 heart rate monitor, the 970 with my heart rate monitor to the Apple Watch Ultra by itself. So overall distance at the Apple Watch Ultra 2, 5.96 miles, whereas the other watches were much closer. So all the Garmin's were within 0.01. The Apple Watch Ultra tends to smooth out the data, so the distance is always shorter. 
and thus the pace is going to be slower as well because the duration, the time should be the same. It's just the distance is shorter and pace is a combination of distance and time. Heart rate from the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the HRM 600, 138, 138 on par. Ignore the other two. Max heart rate on par. Elevation, we seem to have some different numbers. The Garmin's were somewhat close to each other. The Apple Watch Ultra drastically different. Calories, eh, everyone was kind of all over the place. Now the biggest part is the charts. Let's look at overall heart rate of the HRM 600 with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. It looks like they were head and head. If you look at this, those two devices were relatively close. There was maybe a few points over here where we can see the Apple Watch Ultra 2 went up to 142, 146, and then 141. So something happened in this area where the beats separated a bit as well as in this region over here, small separation. But overall, pretty close together. The other two watches, the green and yellow, we're not gonna look at because they were not in the right position. Elevation, this one, it's kind of odd how different they are. I was a bit surprised. Overall trend similar, but at the beginning, the 970 was so far off. The Apple Watch Ultra 2, way far off, but the 965 and 570 were relatively close. And then we get to the top, the Ultra 2 dips under again. And then all the garments tend to come closer together. So that's unique and interesting. At one point, the 965 was above everyone else. But I was wearing both of them on my wrist and my palm to keep enough distance away. And then lastly, pace. Most of the beginning, we were running on the west of the highway, so we maintained a pace. But then the second half, we had to stop at lights. So that's where you see all those massive drops. And I think that might have caused some of the watches to get a little confused. The actual map data. Red is Ultra 2. Blue is the 970. Green is the 965 and the yellow is the 570. So we started here on the west side highway. They all tend to be pretty good. They all tracked around. As you can see the smoothing on the Ultra 2, how nice it is right around that part, but everyone else, there seems to be more data points and less smoothing. And they all follow this part. I think anytime when you're close to the sky, not a lot of trees, all of these watches do really well. So you, you'll be fine. Any of these watches you wear, you're gonna get relatively good data. Looks like the 965 here jumped away from everyone else a little bit but teeny tiny amount now is when we enter the street and everyone started to separate a little bit once we entered the city that's where the data started to differentiate the ultra 2 stayed in the street the other garments jumped into these buildings overall looks good over here and then we did a loop-de-loop -loop. everyone got a bit confused that makes sense i did not go through these buildings but the ultra 2 did cram me through and then we started to go through soho washington square Looks like all the garments jumped in the buildings. The Apple Watch Ultra also jumped into some buildings. The 965 struggled the most here, it looks like, but everyone else had straight-ish lines. And then we went up Broadway. We did run through the park. Seemed relatively strong. Seems like the 965 is the only watch that jumps out of everyone else. So that just might be a hardware software thing. You can see there's a massive curve here. But overall, I think all these watches were relatively consistent. I don't think I'd look at this and say, hey, that's not a watch I would use. They held very strong in New York City with all these tall buildings. So when it comes from the point of like tracking your distance, time, getting good enough GPS data to make sure you did your workouts, all these watches are great. Now, if you want more advanced data, you want the newest watch, maybe you are gonna lose a little bit of battery life with these new features and you want the flashlight, brighter screen. The Garmin's are starting to turn more into kind of like an Apple watch, which is very interesting because the thing I love, especially about the Phoenix 8, is that the battery life lasts so long. I forget that I have to charge it I could take this, this what, 30 days of battery life. Whereas if you compare even the 965 versus the 970, the battery life is almost cut in half. Not ideal. I think that's one of the biggest value adds of Garmin is having longer battery lives, but now they're just adding more smart features, brighter screens. The competition between Apple and Garmin is heating up, so I'm excited to see what the future holds. But if you're getting a new watch and you're willing to spend more money, these new watches are great. If you wanna save money, get the previous watch. Even buy some of these watches used. They're all good enough. My name is Shervin Shares. Follow me on all the socials at Shervin Shares. Subscribe, turn on notifications, sign up for my newsletter down below. Links for all the products will be in the description. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.